Let's think about a tax on producers. Because producers determine the supply side of our supply and demand model, we want to understand how tax affects the supply curve, which I've started by drawing here. When we say that a tax is on a producer, we just mean that, logistically speaking, the producer is the one sending the check to the government. In this case, we're going to consider a 50 cent tax on the producer. We could consider a number of other types of taxes. Taxes that are percentage of the sale price, such as a sales tax. Taxes that don't kick in until an item goes above a certain price, such as a luxury tax, etc. But for the most part, the structure of the tax doesn't affect our conclusions, so we're going to keep things simple here. Let's say that this supply curve represents a small gas station. In that case, the units on quantity here we can think of as maybe gallons per day. So we're just looking at how many gallons per day this gas station is willing to supply at any given price that it's getting for its gasoline. The question we want to ask ourselves is how does the gas station's willingness to supply gasoline change when the tax is imposed? So we can do that, we can start getting this intuition by thinking about a number of hypothetical situations. Let's say, for example, that at a price of $2.50, the producer is willing to supply 20,000 gallons of gasoline per day. Then we can say, well, if this producer needs to keep this entire $2.50 in order for it to be worthwhile to supply this much, what has to happen to the price that the producer initially gets from the consumer in order to be willing to produce and sell this 20,000 gallons. Well, we say if the tax is 50 cents, well, then the consumer needs to be paying $3 in order for the producer to get to keep 50 cents. So we can think about after this tax, the producer needs $3 from the consumer in order to be willing to supply the same 20,000 gallons. We can take another hypothetical point and see what happens. Let's say that at a price of one dollar, or one dollar here, the gas station is willing to supply 5,000 gallons of gasoline. We can use the same logic and say, well, if without the tax, the producer needs to get $1 from the consumer, once this 50 cent tax is imposed, the producer needs to get $1.50 from the consumer so that it can still keep a dollar of that so that it's still willing to produce this 5,000 gallons. So we can think about $1.50 being here. And we get another relevant point on our post-tax supply curve. If we want to, we can do this, you know, one more time, and we can ask what happens at a price of two dollars, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But what we see here is that we're really just defining another line, and what we get if we connect the points of this line is something that looks like this. The important thing to remember here is that what we were doing is we were moving the vertical distance up by 50 cents. So we can say that this vertical distance between the original supply curve and this new thing that we drew is always 50 cents. We can think intuitively about this tax on producers in a couple of different ways. In one way, the tax is just another input cost. The firm already has to pay its workers, it has to pay for its machines and other materials, and now it has to pay the government. In that way, you know, we'll just label this S prime, and this looks pretty much like what we were doing when we talked about increases in input prices when we were discussing comparative statics earlier. Put another way, however, 
we can remember that the supply curve is a function of the price that the producer gets to keep in its pocket. We put this as a function of, let's call this the price to the producer. And the demand curve is a function of the price that the consumer gets to pay for the item. This wasn't a big deal in our original supply and demand diagram since these two prices were the same. So we sort of glossed over that when we were talking about our original supply and demand equilibrium. Now, however, the distinction becomes relevant since we can't solve for supply and demand equilibrium if supply is in terms of one price and demand is in terms of another price. The new supply curve that we drew here is sometimes referred to as an effective supply curve and it states the amount that the producer is willing to supply as a function of the price that the consumer pays. So we can say that this new supply curve here is actually in terms of the price that the consumer pays, and that's going to make it a lot easier when we go to solve for equilibrium. So here I've drawn in our supply curves again, but this time I've added in a demand curve. So we can think about what happens to the supply and demand equilibrium after the tax is put in place. Now you recall that our original free market equilibrium is just where the original supply curve and demand curves intersect. And I've labeled that here as quantity Q star and price P star. Now what we just said is that our demand curve is technically a function of the price that the consumer pays in total for the item. So it then stands to reason that our new equilibrium once the tax is put in place is at the intersection of the demand curve, which is a function of this price that the consumer pays, and this new supply curve that we drew here, which is also a function of the price that the consumer pays. So our new equilibrium, when the tax is put in place, is at this point here. From a quantity standpoint, that's very simple to define. We just drop this down, and we call this Q star, say, sub T, to show that this is the equilibrium quantity when our tax is put in place. The more interesting question comes when we're talking about the prices. Clearly this point of intersection is relevant. So we say, well, this defines a particular price over here. But the question becomes, what does this price actually represent? Because we have two different prices now. We have a price to the consumer and we have a price to the producer. Well, what we'll notice here is that our new supply curve and our demand curve are both in terms of price to the consumer or price that the consumer pays. So we can call this P sub C for price to the consumer star. So in equilibrium with the tax, this is the price that the consumer pays for the item inclusive of the tax. We then want to ask ourselves, well, we have two relevant prices now. We have the price that the consumer pays and we have the price that the producer gets to keep. Where's that second price? And we can find that by just taking this point here and dropping down to the original supply curve. Since the original supply curve is the one that's in terms of the price that the producer gets to keep. So this point here, we can call P sub P star. Not surprisingly, since the vertical distance between the original supply curve and this new supply curve here is the amount of the tax, we can see that these two prices differ by the amount of the tax as well. Which makes sense because the relationship between these two quantities is just that the price that the consumer pays inclusive of the tax is equal to what the producer gets to keep for itself plus the amount of the tax. Qualitatively, we can notice that when the tax was put in place, the price to the consumer goes up, meaning that the consumer is paying more for the item than she was before. And the price to the producer goes down, meaning that the producer is keeping less money for the item than it did before.
Note, however, that they don't necessarily go up and down by the same amount, that it's quite possible that the increase in price to the consumer is greater than the decrease in price to the producer, or vice versa. We're going to come back later and show how these price changes relate to elasticity of supply and demand, but for now, just keep in mind that this original price does not have to be right in the middle, because that's a common mistake that people make. And also understand that when we're talking about the concept of tax incidence, the tax incidence refers to the distance between the price with the tax for either the consumer or the producer and this original no tax price.